again. The speaker of this session is my colleague Bart Nordover, who joins us today live from the Netherlands. Good afternoon, Bart. Hi, Daria. Thank you very much for the uh, for the introduction. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, Bart. Uh, uh, Bart is going to talk about uh, our sustainable AQ technology today. Everyone, uh, we are waiting for your questions in the Q and A chat on the right hand side of your screen. We thank that, Bart. The stage is yours. <laughs> thank you very much, Daria. Once again, uh, so uh, it's it's a great pleasure for me to present during this Alnex Sustainability Conference, and I have lots of things to share with you. So I will jump uh, right into it. So I will be talking about our Acure system, which was launched uh, a few years ago. And um, apart from being a very uh, interesting uh, technical uh, system, it also offers uh, quite a few nice uh, sustainability advantages. And I will highlight those uh, today. So let's uh, first start with a bit of chemistry. I'm, I'm a chemist by training, so, so I always like to do that, especially because this technology is maybe not uh, known to all of you. Uh, it's quite a, quite a new and breakthrough type of technology, so I want to share a bit of the background before we dive into the actual sustainability uh, topic. Now, let's have a look. So the uh, AQ system is based on uh, Michael addition uh, chemistry and uh, more specifically uh, real or carbon Michael addition, which means that we start from uh, an electron donor and an electron acceptor, uh, as you can see in the scheme here on the slide, uh, where the electron donor in our case is typically a melanate group built into a polyester. And this electron donor carries two acidic protons. Now, when using a strong base, you can abstract these protons and uh, the, the anion that you then form will react with the electron acceptor, which is typically an acrylyl functional oligomer forming a carbon-carbon bond. Now, as you can also see, there are two of these um, acidic protons on the structure. So this can happen once more. And you can imagine that uh, if you select your functionality properly, you can then go to very high cross-link density systems. Now, uh, all very interesting. And uh, what is also good to know is that these systems carry a few very polar groups that will interact in solution, meaning that we can go to very high solids and therefore low VOC. I will come back to that point a little bit later as well. Now let's move to the next one. Um, to zoom in a little bit more on the resin components, we use melanate functional polyesters and also we then use acrylyl functional oligomers uh, as the acceptor uh, component. And an example is DIT and PTA as shown here on the screen. Um, to make this work, we need kinetic control, and we achieve kinetic, uh, kinetic control by using a special block-based catalyst in combination with kinetic additives. And I will zoom in on that uh, on the next slide. Um, what is uh, very good to know as well is that you can mix and uh, formulate the donor and acceptor component uh, to form shelf-stable mixtures, and only when you add the catalyst, the paint is activated. Since we use a base catalyst, care should be taken not to have too many acidic species in the paint or at the uh, substrate that needs to be painted. I think I skipped through one slide a bit too quickly. Yes. Um, like I said, the chemistry is very fast at room temperature. And to illustrate that, you can see in the picture on the left-hand side that when you use a free base in this technology, you would get extremely rapid cure, meaning that you would have basically full conversion uh, of the acrylyl groups in about five minutes. This is, of course, nice, and it shows you the power of the chemistry. On the other hand side, it's not very um, practical in a, in a real-life paint. So what we have done is developed a block-based catalyst. This is illustrated on the right-hand side where you see that we react as a strong base with a dialkyl carbonate. And when you do that, you form a carbonate-based anion, and that anion uh, can be protonated by an acidic species forming uh, a carbonic acid, which will decarboxylate, and then you generate a minus, which is noticed uh, there, which um, is a much more potent anion, which can then do uh, Michael addition. So in the pot, the 
uh, the catalyst stays blocked and only when you apply a thin layer your volatiles uh, such as co2 and ethanol can migrate out of the paint and trigger the the, the real michael addition reaction um, in addition to that we need to generate open time and uh, to do so we add on purpose an acidic species such as uh, succinamide which will um, still deblock the catalyst but will lead to a delay in cure as the corresponding anion is a very weak uh, or is a relatively weak base so when we do that you can see the red line in the plot on the left hand side we have now generated open time of about 20 to 25 minutes and uh, on top of that uh, we get very rapid cure to get a paint that still dries within the hour more or less at room temperature <clears throat> So what we have in the end is a tunable platform that uh, can be used on, in several types of application that is also being demonstrated uh, every day again. It's going into a broad range of, uh, of application fields. And uh, the system is tunable in terms of its pot life, tech free time and open time. Now, if you just look to the scheme on the on the right hand side, you see uh, there the gray area, which is traditional uh, isocyanate cured system, which, of course, uh, when curing very quickly, also have a very short pot life. Uh, and for slower systems, you also get a bit more pot life in return. The acre system, uh, the green uh, bar there, you can actually have drying within the hour or one and a half hour and still achieve uh, a, a pot life that is in the range of, uh, of a working day, for example. Now, now that I've introduced uh, the system and, and showed you some of the performance uh, uh, advantages, I now want to dive into the actual sustainability topic. <clears throat> As you can see, and, and these five uh, sustainability pillars have been introduced uh, throughout this conference already several times, uh, and AQ scores on all five of them. First of all, and, and uh, my colleague Elwin already uh, talked about uh, energy costs, especially in Europe, um, this is curing at uh, room temperature at very high speeds, so drying within the hour. Of course, very interesting uh, in these times. Um, on top of that, because the paint has such good pot life, you can use quite a lot of your paint before it solidifies, so you have less waste. On top of that, um, we uh, already mentioned uh, VOC levels, and later on in this presentation, I will highlight a few formulations that go even further than the uh, already quite good VOC levels that we have in traditional solvent-borne acre systems. The system is isocyanate free uh, and also does not use a tin catalyst in the formulation, for example, and therefore can be formulated without sensitization label H317, uh, just to name one uh, advantage uh, in terms of safer materials. And finally, that's, that's actually the next topic I will talk about. Uh, renewable materials can easily be built into this system to also um give uh, a partially bio-based system and we have high hopes that this uh, can go to uh, quite high levels of bio-based materials in the coming years i will come back to that uh, right now in fact um so uh the second uh, main uh, part of this presentation is about uh, bio-based uh, real michael edition curable systems and of course, if you talk about bio-based uh, materials, you can think of two approaches. And, and, and one is the drop-in approach where you replace uh, currently used raw materials by a bio-based uh, uh, alternative. Uh, but you could also try to use alternative bio-based monomers that might give you a completely different uh, or even improved uh, performance uh, 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 schedule. So, if we look at uh, the first approach, we uh, focused on uh, replacing diethyl melanate, which is an important uh, component in our, uh, in our resin system, uh, by a bio-based uh, version. Uh, but we also looked at alternative monomers, such as, for example, isosorbide and succinic acid. Let's have a look at the drop-in approach uh, first. And, and of course, it, it, yeah, we, it, it does what we hoped it would do, uh, being that it doesn't really change a whole lot. So we replaced uh, a bio, sorry, we replaced the petro-based uh, diethylmelanate by a bio-based uh, diethylmelanate. 
And if you look at the performance in two reference uh, resins, which were then formulated uh, into a white pigmented paint, we basically see that the performance is, is nearly identical. And this is, of course, what you hope. Now, by, by doing so, you can already uh, bring in quite some bio-based material uh, into this uh, resin system. But uh, as, as many of you will know, um, also already commonly used uh, glycols uh, or polyols are being supplied uh, as a partially bio-based version. You can think of things like neopentylglycol or trimethylopropane or, or pentaerythritol. And of course, such uh, resins could also already now be incorporated into binders like this to further boost your bio-based content. If we then look at the second approach, which is to really uh, look at alternative compositions, uh, so not the drop-in approach, but really new polymers. Uh, I show a few examples here in the table, and without going into detail, you can see that we've used things like isosorbite, vegetable oils, <clears throat> and some other uh, raw materials that can easily be obtained from, uh, from bio-waste uh, sources. And uh, by doing so, uh, we could uh, make binders that were at that had a bio-based content uh, as, as high as 85 to 90 percent. Now, of course, some of these uh, raw materials are not yet uh, available on, on a commercial scale. So this is where uh, we hope that improvements will be make, made so that we can really bring this into, uh, into practice. Um, if you think about the drop-in approach that I presented on the previous slide, um, in the melanate binders, we can already go to, to about 75% bio-based. Um, and uh, in the acrylate binders, we could go up to about 55%, which means that on solids in a, in a clear coat uh, paint formulation, we could already go to 66% 60, uh, bio-based for a simple clear coat. Now, what is, of course, important is then the performance that you get, because uh, we focus on performance first. And um, on the left-hand side of this uh, slide, you see the formulation that we used, where um, we made uh, a white mill base in the uh, acrylic oil uh, component, and we mixed that with the uh, uh, with the melanate binder and, and, and several uh, additives to, uh, to tune the appearance and so on, uh, additives from, from our editor uh, range. And then in the end, you mix that with component two, which is simply the block base uh, catalyst. And when you do that for these separate binders that, uh, that you can see in this uh, table here, you see that uh, we get tech-free times that in the, are in the range of one hour. Uh, we get hardness values that are very similar to the two references and also the, uh, the overall appearance and adhesion performance uh, is, is in line with what we would, uh, would hope to get. And, and I want to zoom in on um, uh, the bio-based resin 4, uh, the picture at the bottom of this slide, where we see that com compared to reference 1, it actually uh, improves the wet adhesion after quick condensation testing uh, quite significantly, and this bio-based resin, uh, in terms of its performance, is actually on par with with uh, with some of the uh, best current um, commercial references that we have in the in the market. So, bio-based uh, can easily equal uh, uh, performance, and and that's of course what we uh, what we hope to achieve. <clears throat> Now, with that, um, I would like to go a little bit to a, a dream a slide, if you will. Um, of course, we would like to bring this into practice and, and uh, really bring the bio-based content of our binders to a higher level. Um, at the moment, we have a few binders that do contain a significant percentage of, of bio-based material, up to about 30-35%. Uh, but with um, uh, yeah, the, uh, the arrival of bio-based diethyl melanate and bio-based glycols, uh, we can already move some of those to, to levels of, of 50 to 70 uh, percent. And if we dream a little bit further um, and, and we think of uh, perhaps the arrival of bio-based acrylic acid uh, and, and fully bio-based glycols, uh, you could go uh, too much higher value still. So this is something that we anticipate, and of course, um, we would like to uh, we would like to explore that if the demand uh, is there and if the raw materials are commercially uh, available. 
I think with that, um, I, I end the bio-based uh, uh, portion of this presentation, and I would like to move to uh, the second part of my uh, of my talk um, in terms of formulation, because of course, um, with the system as it stands right now, we can already do quite a lot in terms of uh, VOC, for example. As I mentioned uh, earlier, the standard AQ top coats, which are solvent born, uh, have VOC levels that are about 200 grams per liter lower than the uh, than the conventional, uh, for example, 2 kPU uh, systems, and um, uh, that means that the VOC of those paints are about uh, 200 to 250 grams per liter, which is already quite uh, quite good. But uh, we uh, also realize that there's a demand for further increase in solids, depending on the geography, depending on the application, and and often this is um, yeah this is triggered by regulations uh, or or by uh, by regulatory uh, pressure. Now, for us that meant that we wanted to develop binders that were 100% reactive, and uh, that's what we did. So based on existing binders, we uh, we went into the development of a few of the examples listed in the table here, where we uh, replaced the uh, organic solvent, which which is typically butyl acetate, by a reactive diluent, and by doing so, we have a system that fully reacts into the AQ network, and uh, well hardly gives uh, any volatiles at all. So by doing so, we can then look at two examples of formulations that we've based uh, on this. This is actually a, a formulation put together by my, uh, my colleagues in the US. This is for flooring application. So it's a clear coat, uh, ultra high solids uh, used in, in, for example, uh, parking decks, as you can see in the picture. Um, it is based on uh, a solvent free uh, flexibilized donor resin in combination with a low equivalent weight. Um, yeah, also a sort of reactive diluent, but one that also boosts uh, the drying of this system. Uh, it's formulated uh, in combination with uh, AQ550105, which is our dye TMPTA grade, uh, specifically developed for the AQ system. And when we do that, we uh, reach a VOC level of about 30 grams per liter at a solids content of about 95, 96%. Uh, now, again, we need to look at performance. So on the next slide, uh, just a, a few uh, key uh, results. So um, the, the paint has a, a gloss of around 90 uh, uh, gloss units at, at 60 degrees. It dries, uh, so through dry uh, within the hour. And what is very important for flooring application is that you good, get good uh, tie-in or lapping of your paint. So when you uh, paint large surfaces that you get a very nice, smooth, seamless uh, finish. Now you can see here in the picture that um, compared to a premium uh, commercial 2K polyaspartic system, Acure does very well and we have about a 20 minutes uh, tie-in. Uh, time for this particular paint. So a very nice example of, of how to uh, combine performance with, uh, with a very high solids content uh, paint. In the second uh, advantage, uh, sorry, example, uh, I would like to show uh, a top coat that was uh, formulated for prime metal applications. Uh, again, here uh, working with the 100% uh, reactive AQ binders that I uh, that I introduced previously, and what I want to highlight here is that um, uh, something that I did not mention before: um, when we develop uh, a melanate binder, we typically develop two uh, resins in one go because we have the version uh, without succinamide kinetic additive and with succinamide, meaning that by mixing the two, you can very accurately tune your uh, open time and dry time. And that's what you see in this formulation here. So we have AQ510202, which is a solvent-free binder without succinamide. And we have the 272, which then contains a certain degree of succinamide. Uh, combining the two in a certain ratio gives you the open time and dry time uh, that, that you can actually dial in. 
again fully formulated with uh, with our additives and with DIT and PTA which is which is our workhorse uh, acrylate in many applications uh, you also see that the paint contains a bit of propanol this is to further increase uh, the pot life and of course again it is cured with our uh, block based catalyst AQ500 this paint is uh, is a bit over 91% solids and um, uh, let's have a look at, at what we achieve with a paint like this. Um, so it develops hardness uh, uh, quite nicely. So we are uh, at around 90 uh, seconds Koenig hardness after one week. Um, and the tech free time of this particular paint is 40 uh, minutes. Uh, pot life is four hours, but that could in principle be further extended by, uh, for example, adding a bit more of, of the, uh, the propanol. Of course, you have to balance that out against the um, uh, VOC requirements for the particular application. Again, this is an ambient cure system, and it shows excellent adhesion to uh, the epoxy primer substrate. And because these systems are fully aliphatic, also we get outstanding weathering uh, performance. Now, with that, I will come to the conclusion of my uh, of my presentation. So, um, we look at at Acure as as a platform system that that uh, will take flight in different uh, application fields. Uh, first of all, based on its performance, so so very rapid drying at room temperature and improved productivity. And in these times of, of uh, energy uh, uncertainty, also uh, good to know that there's a system out there that will uh, help in, in reducing uh, oven temperatures or even completely uh, moving away from forced uh, drying. Um, the system has excellent pot life and uh, this is decoupled from the drying time, which is quite a, a neat uh, feature. And um, the overall performance profile is uh, is really quite good um, and and therefore we see this go into a lot of different applications now in the current uh, presentation I really wanted to focus on the uh, on the sustainability advantages that we uh, that we see with this system so um, it's, it's also good to know that apart from the solvent based system we have also an aqueous uh, waterborne uh, form um, we have uh, extensive options to build in uh, bio-based materials, which, um, which, which is, I think is, is a plus. And in the formulation, you can, um, you can really go uh, to systems that are quite beneficial in terms of labeling. And finally, as shown in the last uh, few slides, we can also go to even lower VOC uh, paints in the formulation. Now with that, uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I give uh, the word back to, uh, to Daria uh, to see if there's any questions. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Bart. And yes, the answer is yes, we have uh, questions. So let's get started with uh, Q&A. And the first question, as AQ technology is base uh, catalyzed, how well does it cope with acidic substrates such as putties, acidic wood types, and waterborne base coats? Yeah, very good uh, question, a very relevant question. So I I, uh, I already pointed to this uh, this point in uh, in my presentation. So we use a base catalyst, and of course bases can be neutralized by uh, by acidic species. So we have to be careful with that. Uh, this means, for example, that, that the binders that we, uh, we produce, both on the melanate as on the acrylate side, uh, are very low in acid uh, content. Uh, and we also advise customers to, um, to formulate uh, with, with uh, for example, pigments that have a very low acidic uh, content. Now, if we then talk about the substrates, uh, this is something we've looked into in detail as well. Uh, of course, we realize that if you go to, uh, for very highly acidic wood types and putties that you might have an issue with drying. And in fact, that is also the case. So you see their clear inhibition uh, from the substrate. Um, in some cases where the inhibition is mild, you could correct for that by adding a little bit more catalyst. So that is in, in many cases a feasible approach. Uh, also by uh, choosing the right binder combinations, you can, you can increase the average functionality of the system, which will help in getting good drying. 
but um, it's also good to mention that we are working uh, on a, on a quite an, uh, uh, a good range of sealer uh, systems that will um, seal in um, any acidity coming from wood, for example. Uh, so you can apply a thin layer of, let's say, 10 microns and then apply your AQ uh, clear coat, for example, on top of that. So this is... Uh, this is actually uh, still a work in progress. We we have a few uh, options already uh, already available, but uh, newer improved versions uh, will soon uh, will soon be presented as well. Thank you very much for taking this one too. Uh, just a second, I I would like to go to the second question. Uh, can recycled materials be used in the system? And if yes, how much recycled material can be used in it and retain the <clears throat> desired properties? Yeah, very good, uh, good question. So this is something that uh, uh, we didn't not look into uh, in, in much detail. But, but of course, if you think about polyesters in general, uh you, you can think of, of some of the activities that are already uh, also uh, being looked at in our company so you can think about recycled um uh, polyesters like pet uh, we we know that that you can use uh, of course raw materials like that in in the polyesters that we use in uh, in acure so definitely uh, there is room to, uh, to to try that out and um I don't see uh, a barrier per se. I mean, we can we can use uh, glycols and dicarboxylic acids and, and esters and things like that. So if there's a recycled stream, um, I, I don't see why we could not use it. Thank you so much, Bart, for answering this. And the next question, how does the kinetic additive system work and how do you control open time, pot life and dry time? Yeah, so it's it's. Um, I, I realized that I only briefly touched upon this uh, topic in my presentation. Uh, normally, when we present the technology, we go a little bit more in into detail. But of course, this was about sustainability, so I wanted to keep it a little bit light on the on the chemistry. Um, we basically so so on the one hand we we block this uh, this catalyst, uh, so that will uh, give you the uh, pot life. And the reason for that is, is because um, for the catalyst to deblock, you need volatiles to escape. And in a in a closed vessel or in a let's say a, a vessel where you have a lot more volume than than surface area, uh, you can keep that catalyst blocked for quite a long time. And like I mentioned in the presentation easily achieved, and, and we've also seen examples where it even went uh, in order of days. Um, but then the tricky bit is to uh, control the chemistry once you apply the paint in a thin film. Of course, then you uh, can easily get rid of the volatiles. The catalyst will deblock. And then we use succinamide, uh, which is more acidic than the, um, than the melanate. So in fact, it deblocks the catalyst. You form a succinamide-based anion. And that anion will do micro addition uh, onto the acrylate, but it does so uh, very slowly. So you already... Uh, let's say slow down the chemistry but also succinamide is a monofunctional small molecule so even if it does react onto an acrylate it does not lead to an increase in viscosity so we keep the viscosity low and we keep the reaction slow and and uh, once the succinamide is consumed then you will really start to get uh, the um, um, you you will start to see that the melanate will start to react and you will get the crosslinking so that's that's how it works uh, in a large nutshell <clears throat> thank you bart and we move to the next question are there bio-based reactive diluents in this or other systems that which are acrylic based that's um, a very good question uh, we uh, of course always look at at low viscosity uh, acrylates for systems like this uh, one of the reasons why we use things like DIT and PTA of course it helps to keep the the solids of the system quite high and it gives you a nice low application viscosity for the for the paint uh, depending on the performance we we sometimes also use uh, higher uh, molecular weight material um, if you go to lower molecular weight materials um, of course uh, there's a balance there so so 
yes, it's good for uh, solids, but it's usually not so good for labeling because the lower the uh, molecular weight of the uh, acrylate species, uh, typically the more volatile it is and you, you come into to some labeling issues. Um, we know uh, and we have in our portfolio uh, at Allnex uh, bio-based, um, relatively low molecular weight acrylates that we have used in, in the AQ system successfully. I would not call them uh, reactive diluents per se, but we have been able to, to further boost the bio-based content of, uh, of our formulations using bio-based acrylates. So yes, we, we, we have them, but, but yeah, they don't necessarily reduce the viscosity of the paint uh, that much. <clears throat> Wonderful, and we move to the next question. Is there a system available for a non-primed metal? Ah, direct to metal, uh, always a good <laughs> uh, topic <laughs> and a topic that we've actively uh, uh, worked on, uh, especially over the last few years. Um, let's, let's make a sort of a, a general statement that um, very fast drying paints that are not necessarily very polar and uh, like the AQ system uh, are not uh, uh, natural uh, performance in direct to metal systems. So you have to work hard to, to get that to, to work. Uh, so that's what, that's what we've done. So we now um, have resin, resin systems that give improved uh, performance direct to metal, both on the melanate and on the acrylate side. And we've also looked more into the formulation in the sense that we wanted to um, include the possibility to use well-known adhesion promoters like, like amino silanes and things like that. Um, that's not necessarily straightforward in, in a system where you have uh, the option to also do azamycal addition with um, uh, amino silanes onto acrylates and things like that. But we found a solution for that that we can advise. So uh, basically, we have a special uh, a catalyst system that can that can help there. So we are working on it. Uh, it's uh, I, I will not claim victory yet that we have the perfect direct to direct to metal system, but it's um, it's getting there. Thank you, Bart. Let's move to the next question. Is there a possibility uh, uh, for to be used for UV curing coatings with catalysts such as photo base generator? Okay, also very interesting uh, question, and of course, <laughs> also something that we uh, that we thought of uh, in the past. So um, uh, you're then uh, sort of talking about a uh, well dual dual cure option where you uh, do UV curing over the acrylates, but also generate a strong base that that will trigger the Michael addition. Uh, I think I think it's a very elegant way to look at this. Uh, we we. Uh, we have uh, looked into this. Uh, we have not developed systems in this yet, also because uh, we weren't always uh, the only ones thinking about systems like this. So we also have to keep in mind uh, that that there's uh, that there's IP out there, of course. But it's it's definitely uh, an option, I would say. Yeah. Thank you, Bart. And we move to the next. Uh, what about the stability of the bio-based products that you presented? Uh, and what about the consistency in the supply chain? Can you please com comment on that? Yes, uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so this is something we always look for. Now, of course, uh, so some of these raw materials uh, were uh, were well uh, used to in, in the coating uh, coating world. So so things like vegetable oils have, have been used in coatings for, for, for a very long time. And, and we know how to deal with that even when there is sometimes uh, some variation in the um, in the exact uh, composition of those materials and depending on on the source so that's not an issue uh, if we look at the, the the molecules like like isosorbite uh, nowadays that's that's a well known uh, commercially available uh, dial that that uh, is is produced to very high purity so so also there i don't think we have an issue and and what we have seen with the um, with the bio based diethyl melanate yeah that's again uh, very well under control. So, so we have not seen issues so far. Um, but of course, we're also looking at at materials that already have been under development for quite some time, and and uh, where the sort of uh, early early variations were taken out already by the supplier. So, I can only comment on uh, on those, of course. Yeah. 
Thank you, Bart. And we move to the next question. Uh, does the durability of RMA coating system meet the demand or the specifications for auto exterior OEMs? Uh, to, to be short, yes, um, uh, we have actually quite a good track record when it comes to, uh, to outdoor durability. Uh, I think I mentioned during the presentation that we're looking at a, a fully aliphatic system, which, which helps. Um, and uh, from our own testing, uh, both in, in uh, let's say, accelerated weathering, but also in, in uh, real life weathering uh, in, in Florida, we get very good results, which are, uh, let's say, on par at least with um, um, with high-end uh, 2KPU systems, for example. And um, yeah, we get we get good feedback also from from customers looking into those aspects. So so I have no uh, I have no fears uh, on that uh, on that side. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Bart. And let's move to the next question. Uh, can you please comment on the end of life phase of AQ coatings as well as others? Is it taken into account when we formulate this? Um, so, so this is an. I think this is a, a more general question. Uh, thinking about end of life for for paints, um, uh, I, I think it, it, it's it's it's. Um, a, a tricky question in in the sense that you have to be able to um, uh, somehow <laughs> uh, collect or re re uh, yeah regain the material. Uh, that that's something that uh, that is not so easy. Of course, we're looking at an ester-based system, so you could, in theory, uh, envisage uh, that that you could hydrolyze materials like that. Uh, but but. But yeah, it's it's not something that we have a, a, a cut and clear uh, answer for at this stage. Thank you very uh, thank you very much, Bart. And we move to the next question. Uh, other than paint, are there other application areas for this technology, such as maybe OEM vehicle refinish? Yes. So so we. Um, we have looked uh, into several applications, so, so uh, okay, uh, focus has been uh, initially on, on uh, applications on metal for, for um, uh, protective and ACE and applications like that. Um, but of course, when you start to launch a system like this, uh, it will be tested in, in anything you can imagine, including uh, uh, VR. Um, so, so here, in some cases, the, the aspect of uh, acidic base coats uh, pops up, but also putties, of course, if you have repaired uh, a dent in a, in a car. So also here, we're looking at working with, uh, with sealer layers, for example. Um, we also know that uh, that on solvent borne uh, base coat, we often get much better performance. So, so yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely not excluded. Um, it, it's also going in applications like, like um, uh, floor coatings, uh, plastic coatings and things like that. So it's, it's quite really quite broad. Thank you very much for answering this question, Bart. Everyone, I would like to, uh, that was the last question for, for today. I know and I see there are still questions coming for Bart. Uh, as already mentioned, uh, I will send this question to him and they all will be answered in a written form and published on this platform Monday next week. Uh, don't forget that you can contact Bart as well as other speakers, speakers using the uh, features that we have on this platform. By going into the profile of a speaker, you can send them a direct message, you can email them, or you can come with a meeting proposal. Please do that. With that, I would like to, uh, I would like to conclude this session and I would like to conclude uh, the second Sustainability Conference Day. Uh, so, uh, we would like to welcome every one of you tomorrow and our experts will be there to answer your questions. Tomorrow, we are going to make a deep dive into the market segment construction and infrastructure. So thank you, Bart. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye -bye. everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>